So these are my best films of 2016. They're in no particular order. I will try to highlight which ones I thought were the absolute cream of the crop. But for the most part, these are just movies that I thought belonged in the conversation for the best film of 2016. Let's get started with a small New Zealand film called The Dark Horse. Man, what a powerful movie. If you have not seen this, definitely look it up. Watch the trailer. Trust me, you're going to want to see it. It's got such an amazing cast, such a great story. This is one of those movies that I normally wouldn't be into because it's a little bit of a tearjerker. It's a little bit of, of kind of forced emotion and empathy, but it does it in such a subtle, brilliant way. I cannot recommend this movie enough. Definitely go see The Dark Horse. Next up is a totally different type of movie called The Invitation. Man, this movie blew me away. You know, I had not heard too much about it. I'd seen a little small teaser here and there, and then I finally got to see it a couple months back, and man, it was just incredible. It's such a different type of film. I can't think of a movie I've seen quite like it before. Again, watch the trailer for it, get a kind of a feel for it. It's basically about this kind of dinner party with a bunch of people, a bunch of old friends, and there's some weird stuff going down, and you're not really sure what's going on. It's just, it's Excellent. Got to see that movie, The Invitation. Next up, we've got a comedy. One of my favorite movies of last year is The Nice Guys. Now, this movie is not as good as I hoped it would be. It's written and directed by Shane Black, who did Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which I think is even better. But I did really enjoy The Nice Guys, and mainly because we don't get a lot of movies like this nowadays. Everything's either like a really goofy comedy, or it's like an indie dramedy, or it's like a heavy drama. And this type of buddy cop movie with some serious nature and some fun, you just don't get a lot of movies like this, and Shane Black is excellent at writing these type of films. Definitely check out The Nice Guy. Next up is The Lobster. This movie is unbelievable to look at. Visually, it's fantastic, super interesting plot. Now, the movie is pretty strange. It's a weird one, for sure. If you go into this expecting kind of a more traditional type of film and plot, you're going to be pretty weirded out, you're going to be disappointed, but if you go into it with an open mind, you're going to experience something that, that's probably the most interesting film I saw of last year. It'll definitely stick with me, and I'm not sure it's one of the greatest films ever, but it's certainly one of the more interesting, and it's as a film, as an art, it's incredibly well put together. Definitely check out The Lobster. Next up is a movie I really enjoy called Midnight Special. This is Jeff Nichols' movie. If you guys don't know Jeff Nichols' work, definitely look into it. He wrote and directed Mud and Shotgun Stories. He's an excellent director. He did the recent film Loving, which I haven't had a chance to see yet, that I'm really excited about. But Midnight Special was a really interesting film. Again, a lot like The Nice Guys in the sense that we don't get a lot of movies like this. Midnight Special is essentially about uh, a young boy who may have some kind of powers or something like that, but it's done in such a a uh, serious and adult way that it makes this kind of interesting sci-fi type of adventure film um, much better than something like Star Wars or some crap like that. Next up should be no surprise for you guys if you saw my review for Hunt for the Wilder People. I found this to be an incredibly charming, funny, brilliantly shot film. I cannot recommend this movie enough. It's a New Zealand film, came out last year. Definitely go watch Hunt for the Wilder People right away. Such a great movie. You know, it, it's, it's this goofy, crazy comedy, but at the same time, it's got a lot of heart to it, and you just can't miss it. Definitely check it out. Here's another one that you may have seen my review on, and you know how much I loved it, which is a movie called Other People. I love this movie. It's got Molly Shannon and Jesse Plemons, and it's such a beautiful movie about, you know, life and death and what happens those last few years if you're battling something like cancer and, and you just can't make it. You just can't survive it. And trust me, I'm not spoiling anything here. You'll kind of learn um, that Molly Shannon's character dies in the first like 10 seconds of the movie. But the movie is just handled with such care. The writing's fantastic. You get these really interesting characters and subplots that develop throughout this last year or so of her life. And you really get to know the characters in a great way. But at the same time, it's not too heavy. It keeps it kind of light in certain moments. There's some comedy, there's some fun stuff. But overall, it's a movie that really sticks with you and I definitely will remember this movie for a long time to come. Definitely check out other people. Next up, we've got an unbelievably interesting film called Animalisa. If you have not seen this, definitely check it out. This was a stop motion puppetry film that, you know, again, not my cup of tea usually. I'm not really into a lot of that stuff, but man, this movie is so interesting. It's a Charlie Kaufman movie. If you don't know Charlie Kaufman's work, you definitely need to go look on Rotten Tomatoes or IMDb, pull up the films that he's directed. He does 
Very, very interesting films that you definitely need to see. And this is no exception. Again, the film has these stop motion puppets, but they feel more real than 99% of the movie characters I see in real life. They're just so believable. The story is so fascinating. Of course, because it's Charlie Kaufman, you've got a little bit of strange, you know, uh, surrealism going on. But for the most part, it is very realistic. And it's just a beautiful film. I don't want to give too much away, but you definitely need to check out. Look up Animal Lisa and try to see it as soon as you can. All right, next up, we've got 10 Cloverfield Lane. Now, I was not expecting to love this movie, to be honest with you. I like the cast. It, was, it looked pretty interesting, but I just thought it would be like a pretty good movie. But the reason it's in my list is because I just thought it was so well made. It's a lot like Stranger Things, where that's not really my go-to type of film or go-to type of show. But if you do it that well and it's that interesting, you know, you really deserve some credit for it. And that's how 10 Cloverfield Lane is. It's such an interesting movie. You really don't know what's going on throughout the entire film until the last maybe 10 or 15 minutes. You just don't know what's going on. You don't know who to believe or what's going to happen next. It's such an interesting film. I would definitely recommend it. It's got that great level of tension throughout the whole film. And last but not least is an amazing German film called Victoria. Man, this movie blew my mind. Not only is it a really solid movie, I mean, the movie's like a 9 out of 10 any way you shake it, but then when you learn at the end, after I did, after looking into it, that the entire film is shot in one take, that just blew me away. I mean, it's honestly, it's amazing to watch. It's not like it's all shot in one take in some room somewhere. It, it sprawls across an entire city throughout the film. It's such an incredible film. Great performances, especially when you consider this is all one take. But even without that, great performances, great writing. It's such an interesting movie. You've got to go see Victoria. It, it, it's just incredible. Definitely check it out. Now, there are some movies I have not had a chance to see yet. I don't really enjoy going to the theater, to be honest with you. So I wait for a lot of this stuff to come out so I can watch it at home and really get into the film. So there are films like Arrival and Loving that I may, you know, may have been in my list. I feel pretty confident they would have been but I just didn't get a chance to see him. So I'll, I'll review those as soon as I get a chance to see him and let you know what I think about him. Maybe I'll let you know if they would have been in my best movies of, of 2016. But that's it for now. I loved all of these films. Really exceptional stuff. It was a great year to watch movies. I cannot wait for this year. I hope we get some you know, more top level stuff like this. Really great stuff all year round. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section. What was your favorite movie of 2016? Maybe something I haven't heard of. I'm always looking for new stuff. Let me know if, what you thought about the movies that I listed. What was your favorite out of those? I definitely want to hear from you guys. If you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you at the next Culture Critic.